just arrived. Here. Cool. I have no idea how to interview people. What's your name? Oh, I should answer already. <laughs> okay. My name is Ottilie. <clears throat> um, do I have to look in the camera or at you? I feel like this chair is sinking into the grass. Um, I'm kind of sliding off. <laughs> so, what was your role in this? <laughs> um, I was your videographer and I helped you with the eight stations. All right, so we're here. And this is all the gear I'm gonna have on me during the run. Starting from my legs, trail running shoes, compression sleeves, I've got triathlon pants, a breathable running t-shirt, and then I've got my running vest, which has all the most important things. First of all, I have two half a liter water bladders. I've got some energy gels. I've also got a mug. Then on the zipper pocket, I've got my phone, different kinds of pills, like caffeine pills, salt tablets, and antacids. Blister tape, and then I've also got some toilet paper. And then on this extra side pocket, I've got some uh, trail mix. What is this? And then on the back, I've got a long sleeve running shirt, an ultra lightweight rain jacket, GPS tracker, space blanket, headlamp, GoPro, emergency rations, and probably some other stuff, which I just can't remember right now. He's guiding us to the starting line, because we don't know where it is. Älä mitää, että nestettä kuluu. Ei pahitteeksi myös ole laittaa vähän sääski litikkavyrkkyä tuonne polvitaipeisiin. Siellä voi olla myös kavereita tuolla matkan varrella. Muitakin kuin muita juoksijoita ja poroja. Viisi minuuttia starttiin aikaa. Viisi minuuttia satakilottisesti starttiin aikaa. Viisi, neljä. Kolme, kaksi, yksi, ja ei muuta kuin matkaa, tsemppiä kaikille, nautiskelkaa matkasta, ei muuta kuin sinne vain. I don't know if it was a good idea, but I decided to start the run at the back of the pack. In fact, I was the last runner to start the run. But I took that as a challenge. I wanted to see how many people I could pass during the run. I mean, given that I would finish the run. Here we go, my first ever. 100 can run. I'm so stoked. Literally have no idea what to expect. The very first thing I learned about ultra distance running is that uh, there's a lot of walking. I think it's a common misconception that you run throughout the, the event. In reality, if you're not one of uh, the front pack runners, you're most likely gonna be walking a large part of the event, especially if it's super hilly, like it was in, in this case. And we sure walked a lot for the first 10k. If you look at the GPS tracking of the event, you can see that after like 45 minutes, there were maybe 30 runners running in the front. And then you had the remaining 200 runners jammed up in a queue. And then if you zoom in all the way to the back of that group, that's, uh, that's me. That's me trying to desperately make my way to the front of the group. Ten point six kilometers, an hour and forty-five minutes. On just now, I'm able to actually run. So 
we got there and then you left and then I drove to the first station right away, put everything ready in the trunk of the car. Some people were like injured or like vomiting and then I got really worried. I was like, oh my God, is this what's coming for you? And then you came um, and then you took a poo poo. <laughs> and um, yeah. Scratch that. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I might need to use the toilet <laughs> right away. Like really bad gas. That's like the only thing, like it felt really good. And the scenery is just beautiful, but my stomach is starting to do all kinds of things. So we've got so much stuff there in the aid station. <laughs> I really need to poop. But yeah, the first 21 kilometers felt pretty good. I don't know, should I go poop there? Did you check the flavor of these damn energy bars? No. What do you think it could be? Coffee. Cherry. Oh. Ha. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I hate cherry. The next major thing I learned is that long endurance events are not so much about moving fast. They're about never slowing down. I mean, I had pushed hard before the first aid station to pass as many people as I, as I possibly could. But all that was quickly wasted because I was so slow at the aid station. And again, if you look at the GPS track, Seven people passed me at the aid station. Seven people passed me because I was taking a dump. And after that first aid station, I faced a, a real problem. God damn it. My stomach is just a major problem at the moment. <sighs> Let's try to continue then. Okay, so now I think it's best if I take it a bit easier for a while. Because I've read that, I mean, diarrhea is something that can literally just stop your race. It can get so bad that you can't continue. You can't, can't get any nutrition in and all that, so... That's, that's really good. Water provided by Mother Nature. One thing about these ultra trail running events is that you meet and talk with a lot of people on the trail. And based on my experience, I would categorize most of those people into three different categories. There are the rookies, the gurus, and the trains. A train is someone who is moving forward with a constant pace and they show almost no sign of fatigue or exhaustion. So in other words, they are like trains. And with their relentlessness and grit, they motivate other people around them to continue running and to push their limits. And at 25 kilometers, I met my first train. Come on. Let's ride this train. During the whole run, I ran with this train or this guy in five different occasions. Each time we lost each other and then I, I found him and he always dragged me to the next aid station. So five times he saved my run. Time to go again. Too much, a bit too fast at the aid station because I, I have this pain in my stomach. I'm only walking slowly, but my heart rate is still like 165. And that right there is a marathon. the most surreal feeling because I've been awake all night but I don't feel tired anymore and it's like 6 30 a.m. I think it's just you know so incredible what your body can do 
I mean, it can, it, it can do so much more than what I think most people think it can do. You just need to push your body there. And, you know, you might learn something new about yourself. So my, my tummy has gotten better. And my legs start to feel pretty numb. Right, fuck. Everything's so difficult after 50k of running. Okay, I want something salty. But, you know, no blisters, no chafing, so pretty good. I just got some bad news. There was supposed to be a water point in like 9 kilometers, because then, then after that there's a long 21k stretch. But apparently the person who were, was supposed to deliver the water there hasn't delivered the water, so there's no water at the water point. So now it's gonna be like a 30k stretch without any water points. So. The trail is quite a lot easier now. Pace is faster. That's the half way mark there. 50k. You know, I thought it would be motivating to get to the 50k mark. To be halfway there. But it was the exact opposite. It was demotivating. Because I was already totally wrecked at 50k. And I knew that the next 50k would be exponentially harder. So the mantra, every step now is closer to the finish line than to the start line. It, it just didn't work at all for me. So apparently there was a miscommunication. And there is water here. So that's good news. At around 55 kilometers, I met two other guys, and I would now categorize them as the rookie and the guru. A rookie in this context is simply someone who might have done some running in the past, but they've never actually done an ultra-distance run. And what I found out is that if you are a rookie like I was, finding another rookie to run with can be really motivating. Because they're going through the same struggles and same emotions as you. And at least for me, it was just uh, reassuring to know that I wasn't the only one feeling bad at that moment. And then we have the guru. A guru, of course, is someone who has a lot of experience in these ultra distance events, and they have a wealth of knowledge about ultra distance events, and they share that knowledge. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but out of all of these things, there was one thing that really stuck with me. He said that more than anything, these ultra distance events are an exploration into yourself. And I, you know, in retrospect, I couldn't agree more. Plus, this guy was actually running a 166k race. And he had already covered over 100 kilometers, which was the distance I was ultimately aiming for. And he wasn't complaining. So, you know, I, I, I kind of felt like I can't complain either. I just need to push on. Oh, yes. Whew. Nine hours and 51 minutes behind. So, I just rolled my ankle. My pee is yellow. Dehydrated. I'm on like new territory. I don't think I've ever felt this like beaten up. I have so many pains, like you have one long climb and then descending to the aid station. I think my stomach is cramping. Yeah, so yeah, I waited there for you for quite some time and then you came and you were like <laughs> destroyed completely. I was, that, I was really worried then because you like, you weren't really talking that much. I mean, it was just a really big contrast between how you were before. And I think you were also saying that you didn't know if you could do it. I think at that point you were also like, if I still feel like this at the next one, I don't know if I can finish it or something like that. And then you want any more of these trails or things? Oh my god. How are you doing? Mommy, can I have a little bit? Yeah, you're so broken. Come on, we got to come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. 
I have 12 hours. I like sleep six hours here and then go. And what made it even worse was that the next stage or the next part of the run would be the toughest of them all. We would face the steepest and longest climb on the whole route. I'm talking 500 meters of ascending up a ski slope which was made out of these wobbly rocks. It was totally insane. This is just ridiculous. I mean, to this day, I, I'm not really sure what uh, made me continue after that aid station, what pushed me forward. But the fact that I did somehow continue after that aid station just taught me a key point. And it's that even when your body is totally broken and your body is shutting down, your mind can still take you a lot further. This is the final stretch. Oh my god, I'm gonna faint. F it. There's just like no doubt. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. What? Are you feeling better? No, not at all, but I just I just I just didn't believe I could do it. Huh. Fuck. <laughs> Fourteen and a half hours. Without any sleep though. I just keep eating way too much at each aid station and then I can't run because my stomach hurts. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna hold. So, here's the final challenge. Climbing up this thing. I just keep thinking about what that one guru told me. That long endurance events are explorations into yourself. Because that's, that's so true. When you go past those low points, which are inevitable in these long endurance events, you learn something new about you, about your body, and about your behavior. And you would never have learned those things had you not pushed yourself to the absolute limit. I can honestly say that even though I was certain that I would finish the 100K run, I never knew how much suffering it would require and that I could actually manage and push through that suffering. That's it, toughest part, don't. It's kind of like uh, you live in this box that supposedly sets your limits. And then you attend one of these really tough events and you finish the event and then you notice that, oh my goodness, the box is a lot bigger than you thought and that your limits are somewhere way further and that there are way more opportunities for you out there. That's how I felt about this one, K okay, Ron. And the beauty of all of this is that now that I've had this experience, I can always bring it to mind and use it to motivate myself if I'm going through something tough. I can use it to remind myself that I can go further than I think. And even if I feel like I can't continue, it's just not true. There's more in me. So, you know, it's my first cookie in the jar. I know, oh, I did learn one more thing. After 17 hours of running, Coca-Cola tastes pretty good. Yep, that's good. Mm -hmm.